What does the cancer awareness game mean to you? To you. To you. What does the cancer awareness game mean to you? To me, it helps raise awareness for cancer. For me, it's something that we can fight for together as a team. So Grace is actually my roommate, so it hits really close to home. Grace is, is one of ours, and her story is extremely inspiring in the fact of this young woman has dealt with such a horrible disease, and she's found a way to be so positive. I know it's been really hard your fight against Hodgkin's lymphoma. So can you maybe kind of give some background of your uh, story so far? It's kind of long when you think about it because this started last August. So, well, last month, it was like a year ago. I was like, this is when it all like actually started happening and I had no idea at the time. So I would get super itchy for no reason. And it would get even worse when I would like start to get warm, like sweating. So like working out and playing volleyball, the things that I love to do, became a nightmare for me. And I remember having no clue like what was causing my body to react like this. So my parents and I started to brainstorm just like ideas, just like what is causing this? I got fed up with my body hating the things that I loved. So I went to the doctor with the intention to get a referral to the dermatologist because like my skin, it was weird. Um, so we get to the doctor, I explain my whole situation, like my chronic itching, like, so we get the referral to the dermatologist, but my doctor kind of just like dismissed everything else that I was saying. So we quickly like get into the dermatologist as fast as we could just to move the process like along. And when we get there, they're like, you have internal hives. And I was like, internal hives, what is that? So pretty much, the inside of my body was reacting to something which was causing my itching. So they're like, we're gonna start you on allergy pills. I had to take like two to three a day or whatever. It was really like whenever I was gonna go play volleyball, I had to like take a bunch before so my body wouldn't react. So I wouldn't get itchy. And then I realized they weren't doing anything. Later that day, I noticed like a bump on my neck, like right here and I'm like, what the heck is this? And like, usually when you get sick, like your lymph nodes like enlarge because they're fighting off some sort of infection and everything. So I'm like, all right, it'll go down in a few days. Well, then I noticed one on the other side of my neck and I'm like, mom, like, what is this? Oh, yeah. So I was like, all right, it's just gonna go down. Like give it a few more like days or weeks because it could be in my system still because after a few days I felt completely fine. So. It's like my, it's my senior year of high school too. So mm -hmm. this is like the time that all the kids get their wisdom teeth checked out. And like, I was just at the dentist and they're like, all right, Grace, you gotta go see an oral surgeon. I was like, great, <laughs> on top of this. Yeah. But I had to get a referral to go there. So I went back to the doctor's office, but I was like, I still have these bumps on my neck. So I'm like, I'm not gonna go back to the same doctor that we saw before because she pretty much told me I was fine. Um, so we went and we like, requested to see a PA and we, she had to do everything to get the referral. And then my mom asked her to look at my neck and she's like, all right, like this has been going on for this long. It hasn't gone down. Like you're just noticing more, uh, that could be serious because she just explained that like somebody else came in with something similar and then it turned out it was pretty severe. So she's like, we're going to get this process moving forward. Like, you've been going through this for long enough just we're going to move forward so she scheduled an ultrasound after the ultrasound it showed enlarged lymph nodes like all over my neck pretty much so we're like all right next step we go to an ear nose and throat specialist and from that appointment he's like we're going to need to biopsy one of these because like we're not going to know what it is without actually having it so we're like all right um, it was after the procedure that the ear, nose, and throat specialist told my mom that like, once the results come back, we'll call you and everything. But he's like, we're pretty sure it's Hodgkin's lymphoma and like, just we Googled it. We're like, and then the sim symptoms that I had were identical to the ones from like the Mayo Clinic. And we we're like, so prior to my um, biopsy procedure, they already scheduled me appointment at Kellogg Cancer Center. So like, I was like, huh? Like I, yeah. I got like pretty scared because I was like, oh, that's like the first time this word came up. But I was like, all right, we're gonna just, we're, we're gonna see. Cause like, you never know. 
Um, so the appointment was scheduled for May 18th, and that's when we got confirmation of my diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma. And we didn't know what stage it was at that time because you had to go through a PET scan. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And after my PET scan, it was determined that I was stage two, which is a very curable form of Hodgkin's. So we're like, all right, we've got this. Um, I was on June 21st and it kicked my butt. I, I don't even know, but I, I was not expecting that. I was like super nauseous for all of it. Just didn't feel good. It was, it was a rough, it was a rough one for me, definitely. And then the pharmacist called my mom after and we explained how it put me down pretty fast. Mm. And then they added a um, like long lasting anti-nausea to my pre-meds, which helped a lot, made the process a, a lot easier. Um, so I went through eight treatments and 16 weeks, like within 16 weeks. Um, so from my appointment for with the PA to get my wisdom teeth referral um, to my first chemo was about seven weeks. And then not to mention the nine months of not going, like not knowing what's going on in my body. So that's kind of my story. It's pretty long and yeah, kind of well, goes everywhere, but I mean, nothing's easy, I guess. No, and I'm just incredibly impressed with all the stuff that you've gone through and you still have a smile on your face. I mean, it, during, I mean, these, it, it must have been, I can't imagine how kind of frightening it had to be, not to mention with all this going on with COVID, but on top, it just seems like things were just piling up on you and uh, having a positive attitude. I mean, it seems like you're, from what I've gathered so far, it seems like you're keeping yourself in a positive state of mind. Throughout this time, I know you're close with uh, the team, your coaches, players. Uh, how has the volleyball team program here supported you throughout this entire process? And on top of that, who would you say, if you had to pick, I mean, I don't want you to pick on all the people, but who would you say has been the biggest supporter to this point? Um, so UWSB volleyball has been amazing. Like Coach Lindsay, Coach Mallory, and all the girls have supported me through this entire journey. And like when I was first diagnosed, I wasn't close with the team. Like I had like committed that year, but like, I wasn't talking to the girls and everything. I only talked to a few of them, but like I felt like a lot of love from them because they all started to reach out to me. And like, I was like, I don't even really know these girls that well. And they're like already this caring. And it just shows like the character that there is like within this program. And I remember calling coach Lindsay and telling her everything when I was first diagnosed, I was like crying on the phone. She was on the verge of tears. And she, and I just remember her telling me like, you're going to kick its butt like you got this and i was like it's great to know that i'm a part of a program who like truly cares about the people like within it and everybody like the community too um but like when like i told them and i got the reaction that i did and like them and support and love i was like i picked the right school um and then biggest supporters um uh, i've had a lot of support from a lot of people like I mean you don't really realize how many people like like noted not noticed you but like knew you before and like kind of like were like wow like that actually happens to like somebody that you really did wouldn't expect it to happen to because like I was like in my family I was the like always working out I ate healthy like nobody kind of would like expect that but like i've been very fortunate to have like a great support system and i've had a lot of people by my side and i'm extre extremely grateful for everything my family's been a super big part of my support system because we're we're always there for each other whether we're making a joke or um, like helping somebody through something and they were there for me when i needed them the most like through the highs and the lows so it was great to have them by my side also my club volleyball team, so shout out to Balance. Um, especially my senior year club team, like when I was first diagnosed, they were a great group of girls. I like, got to know them like really well. We're close together. We spent quite a bit of time together with club volleyball, three nights a week, all the time. And then when I first told them about my diagnosis, they were actually like the first group of people that I told. And it was it was a big step for me because like it was ex like I said like accepting it. Um, and like actually being able to say the words. Um, so they helped me through that. <laughs> That's something about sports, whether or not, you know, it's football, volleyball or anything. 
your teammates are like a second family to you and it's great that they're showing you that support and um, yeah no it's really fantastic and um, i was just i'm incredibly moved by all this and to be completely honest if i was put in your position i would not be as positive as you are so we kind of talked about the positives that that have come and i mean obviously i don't want to say i don't want to focus a little bit on the negative here but what would you think was the most difficult part of this journey so far for me i am the type of person who always wants to go go do things like new experiences and everything and not being able to do certain things and go certain places and see certain people and just like having to be extra cautious about my health was definitely hard for me because I didn't want to miss out on stuff. But like at the same time with chemo and it compromising my immune system, I couldn't really run that risk. And my mom had to tell me quite a few times, Grace, you have to stay home. But that was definitely a really challenging part for me. And then also not being able to like play the sport that I love. I've been playing volleyball since third grade. So it's kind of it's, it's what I know, like go to school, play volleyball, go to sleep and then do it all again. Um, so like not being able to be on the court and not being able to like be with my team, it's definitely challenging. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I can't even imagine really what you're going through. But I, again, I sound kind of like a broken record. I'm just so, I don't want to say surprised. I'm just astounded if that makes sense that how you've been able to be as positive because um, and I guess I have one final question and then I'll let you go. I know you're very busy. What do you hope will come from sharing this story here? I just want like other young adults to be aware of like the things happening in your body. And if something doesn't feel right and you're like, this, this isn't like usually me. Be your best advocate, like stick up for what you know is going on, whether it's like your body or just like any other thing. So I guess, be your best advocate. Advocate is like what I want people to like learn from this. Not learn, but to take away from it. Absolutely. I mean, no, that's, that's really great. And um, yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you uh, sitting down and talking. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, see you soon back here on the courts and everything continues to go well for you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too.